time. All right. Well, here we are. It's the big night tonight, the Oregon Music Hall of Fame induction ceremony. We're here with Paul Brainerd, who's going to be performing tonight with fellow inductees Pete Krebs and Fernando. And Paul mm -hmm. is the man that uh, everyone from the Decemberists to Blitz and Trapper to the Dandy Warhols and even Kenny Rogers call, <laughs> right, if they want a good, yeah. uh, a good steel guitar player. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you. Congratulations, Thank you. first of all. Thank you very much. Big night for you. Yes. So talk to me about how that feels. You are a member of the Oregon I, Music Hall of Fame. I am. It's, it's, um, it's a little mind-blowing and, and crazy. I mean, I grew up in this town, and I could sit here and, and just wrap off a long list of names of people that I think probably deserve and should be in here before me, people I grew up listening to. But at the same time, I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased and honored, and it feels great to be, to be you know, validated for, for being busy. Yeah, it's nice to have that validation. Yeah. Being a musician, it is kind of a, it's a very lonely life, and every once in a while that ray of validation shines through that goes, oh, people do notice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you always wonder, yeah, should I get a real job? Should I, should well, I have done something else, else with my life? As I'm sure you know, the Oregon Music Hall of Fame is dedicated to raising money to, uh, to build music scholarships for yes. music students, yes. and I'm wondering if you could comment on the importance to you of music education and keeping it alive sure. in schools. Yeah, well, I mean, I, like I said, I grew up in Portland, and I had some scholarships in, as far back in high school and things that paid for everything from guitar lessons. I took guitar lessons with John Stoll on the local scholarship and um, some scholarships when I went to college. I went off to the East Coast for college, but ended up coming back. And um, yeah, I mean, education, I mean, since then, it's skyrocketed. The, the cost of going to, to school is, is crazy. And as far as I'm concerned, it's the kind of thing that everyone should just be able to do. I mean, that should be a cost of society, you know? We care about that and it's important to us and we should do it. But things like this help make it happen. Yeah, what so. goes through your mind when you hear, you hear communities think, well, we've got to cut costs and then they look to the art program. Yeah, that's a shame for that to be a cost. Right? I mean, it's, it's very important to life and to, to how everything goes. So has your entire career been here in Portland, or have you ever... No, no, I've, I've bounced around a little bit. I mean, like I said, I grew up here. I went to high school in, at Wilson High School. Um, Greg McKelvey was the band director. Thera Memory was the, uh, helped him set up the jazz program there. I studied with those guys. and um, I went to college on the East Coast, came back, played in some bands, and, and checked out the local scene, which was happening then in the early 90s. Went back to the East Coast, went to Boston, went to music school, came back again, played, got involved in everything I could, I could get into. Um, then at a certain point I decided I better get out of town and I, and I went down to Austin where everyone goes, you know, and I have a lot of great friends and I had a lot of good time down there, but ultimately I said I'm from Portland, so I came back. Yeah, so it was the feel of home that, that Kinda. pulled you back to Kinda. the Northwest? Yeah, a lot of yeah. great stuff happened in here and I didn't want to be missing out. But along the way, I did a lot of traveling. I'm, some of the groups I've played with have toured a lot in, in North America and Europe, especially, and a little bit of Asia. So I've, I've, I've gotten to travel around a little bit, but um, more or less this has been my home base. Before we started the interview, maybe we can share this on camera. Sure. It was a funny story. Um, Paul has, well, according to his bio, he's played with Kenny Rogers. But <laughs> no. Now, here's the, here's the reality, and we're going to pull back the fourth wall on this. Explain yes. how that all works out. The, for the fifth wall, maybe. It, um, I, I, I got a call from a local producer, Steve Sunholm, who was um, putting together a, a Christmas album, a compilation that a, a, a keyboard player in Nashville was, was putting together and having various people sing on it. And the track, and he needed steel guitar for this one song, and he called me up, and it turned out that Kenny Rogers was going to be the singer. So I went over to his place in West Lynn and, and did my parts and left. And uh, then Kenny was going to do his parts in Nashville or wherever he's hanging out, you know. Never saw Kenny. No. Oh, no. No, <laughs> no, no. Before we wrap things up, is there anything else you'd like to leave us with on this big night? Um, no, just that it's an honor. And I'm, I mean, like I said before, I think there's a lot of other people that, that deserve to be in, in there and up there. And... Uh, I'm, I'm happy this year seems to be a, a little bit of a focus on the kind of indie rock um, scene from the 90s and early 2000s, and, and I, was, I was glad to be a part of that, and I got to play with a lot of different people, and I'm glad there's kind of a sideman category that, that gets me in. But um, I, 
I send a shout out to all my fellow sidemen, and thanks to everyone. Paul Brainerd, welcome to the Oregon Music Hall of Fame. Enjoy. Thank you.